Mr. President, 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 Mr. Sr. Presidente, o seu assistente secretário de Estado para os Assuntos Africanos esteve em Angola esta semana e lá ele mostrou o suporte dos Estados Unidos a Angola sobre o trabalho que o presidente João Lourenço está a fazer. João Lourenço, o novo presidente de Angola, está a combater arduamente a corrupção em Angola. O que é que você pensa sobre isso? Bem, vamos dar uma olhada nisto. Falarei com o secretário. American companies have had a difficult time doing business and now that they have started taking the government there to court in the U.S., that impoverished nation is spending millions of dollars on D.C. lobbyists and lawyers. One America's Neil W. McCabe has more from Washington. Breitbart political editor Matt Boyle told One American News that Angola has hired one of the swampiest lobbying firms in Washington to represent that government just as American companies are suing them in court. The firm Angola hired, Squire Patton Boggs, is the legacy of the notorious firm founded by Tommy Boggs Jr., a former Johnson administration staffer and the son of a Democratic House Majority Leader. Squire Patton Boggs, which is the uh, probably one of the most premier uh, Washington, D.C. lobbying law firms, uh, it is the center of the swamp if there ever was the center of the swamp. Two senior lobbyists are tasked to the Angola account. Robert Kapla, a one-time National Journal DC dealmaker of the year, and the man hired by the Libyan rebels in the summer of 2011, months before the Obama administration ordered U.S. military forces to topple the Gaddafi regime. The other lobbyist is Joseph Brand, who has a long history of representing foreign governments and individuals, including a $50,000 fee he received for helping Russian oligarch Gennady Tinchenko purchase a luxury private jet with a loan subsidized by the federal government's Export-Import Bank. According to federal filings required by the Foreign Agents Registration Act reviewed by One American News, Kapla and Brand are collecting $4 million for a one-year contract paid in two installments. Put another way, Congress budgeted for Angola $19 million in aid for fiscal year 2019, so that more than 20 percent of the funds U.S. taxpayers are sending to that impoverished nation are going to two D.C. lobbyists. Angola has had serious problems paying uh, commitments that it owes to American companies. One company, APR Energy, sued the Angolan government in a Florida federal court after that country fell into arrears on a $57 million invoice it owed the company for managing power plants in the country. APR Energy also threatened to seize two Angolan oil tankers docked in Jacksonville, Florida, a threat that led to Angola paying the invoice. Boyle said another example of why Angola needs D.C. lobbyists is that government's seizure of housing units built and managed by the Nevada-based Africa Growth Corporation. This company runs real estate uh, properties uh, in Angola. The Angolan government actually forcibly seized these properties at gunpoint with armed uniformed soldiers. According to the company's lawsuit, Angola seized $95 million in property, but negotiated a settlement of $47.5 million, which was never paid. A spokesman for the company told One American News the lawsuit was filed out of frustration. Quote, Africa Growth Corporation has been watching Angola raid U.S. companies and their assets essentially robbed in the country. The final straw was watching them spend a substantial percentage of their foreign aid on lobbyists to sweep under the rug their malign activities in country. And we're not going to tolerate this anymore, unquote. A source familiar with the events told One American News that representatives from the company briefed White House staffers, including the most senior members of the administration, on the company's trouble with the Angolans. The corruption there runs very deep, uh, and they're spreading money around Washington to try to fix the... Um, Uh, uh, and by the way, they've to get the State Department to back off, to get the State Department to back off and to get the uh, Congress to not really zone in on the issue. Angola is far from being a functioning democracy. The Heritage Foundation gave the country a freedom score of 51 out of 100. Neil W. Cave, One American News, Washington.